last time we get to say that. This is the last week of our socks and underwear. So did anybody get socks and underwear this Christmas? Anybody? Oh, yeah, there's a few, several people got socks. Oh, Grayson, Grayson, you want everybody to know you're wearing them today? Yeah, thank you for sharing. We're so glad you're with us as we wrap up this series. In this series, we've talked about how we manage our expectations at Christmas and how sometimes we kind of overblow Christmas. And on Christmas Eve, we talked about, you know, the most exciting thing that we could expect to come out of Christmas is the gift that God sends, that God unwraps love for us at Christmas. Now, what was unexpected here on Christmas Eve, I don't know if any of you were here, but if you were here, it was unexpected. The people that were here, how many of you were here on Christmas Eve? Hello, we stress test this building on Christmas Eve. Wall-to-wall people, all the way to the back, you could barely move. It was quite unexpected, but such a gift for us to see so many of our neighbors and stuff out on Christmas Eve. So it was great. And as we've gone through this uh, Socks and Underwear series, we've looked at the concept of Advent. And we taught you that Advent, the word means coming, and we celebrate the coming of Christ. Now, you could say today, well, Christmas was... You know, Wednesday, Christ already came, but in Advent, we celebrate two things. We celebrate the coming of Christ at Christmas, but also the fact that Christ is going to come again. And each and every week as we go through this series, and whenever series we do, we always have an emphasis verse. And we hope you've seen this maybe on Christmas cards. I know you've seen it every week in worship, but ours this time was from Isaiah 9, verse 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be on his shoulder. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And I want you to know that that that's not just for Christmas Day. That's for every day of the year. As we head into 2014, you have a Wonderful Counselor. You have a Mighty God. You have an Everlasting Father. And you can know the Prince of Peace. And 2014 can be different for you. But as we were going through Advent, Advent has themes. The themes of love, joy, peace. And um, hope as well. And on Christmas Eve, we celebrate Christ as we come together and celebrate it. But this, we had one thing left over and one special piece left over as we were doing our Advent series. And it's the concept of joy. Anybody need a little joy in their life? Anybody? Anybody need a little joy? Because it's not just for Christmas Eve, right? And it's not just for Christmas Day. And it's not just New Year's when we do the countdown. I want some joy all the time, don't you? What I'm excited to share with you this morning is we have a a guest speaker who's going to come now. He sounds a guest speaker, sounds guest speaker, but he's not really a guest. He's one of ours. We're very excited. We have Michael Jefferson. Y'all know who Michael Jefferson is sitting here. If you come here all the time, y'all know who Michael is. If you're if you're visiting with us and you don't know who Michael is, Michael is our youth director here, and he is doing a fabulous job getting our youth up and running. And he is going to come give the message. Not only is Michael help with our youth direction here, Michael also feels a call to ministry. And in just a second, you're going to find out why. If you come up here, Michael, come on up here. So proud of him. Um, y'all are really in for a treat. Please welcome Michael Jefferson this morning. Well, good morning. So happy to get a chance to minister to you guys. Um, well, how many of you guys have ever received a gift card? Yeah, that's probably everybody in the room. And I have some, uh, it's the statistics I have for you are ridiculous because uh, people who have received gift cards are not using them. And you would think, you know, it's a gift card. Uh, somebody's uh, paid for you. They probably uh, got it uh, to a place where you like, and they gave you the gift card. All you got to do is just go to the place where, you know, the name or whatever is on the gift card and just go use it. That's money you can use. Or, you know, if you get something a little bit more expensive than the amount that's on the gift card, just pay the difference, right? And you would think people would just go do that. But uh, I've got some statistics here that are uh, pretty crazy. In 2007, there were $3.5 billion in unused gift cards. In 2012, which was last year, there were $2 billion in unused gift cards. Now, I mean, the number's getting better. That's 1.5 less, so people are doing a little bit better. But you look at it, it's like it's still $2 million. You know, what's going on with you? And uh, from 2005 to 2011, there was um, $41 billion in unused gift cards. And that's just, you know, it's like, well, you know, it's, for me, I want to be like a gift card snatcher now. Like, I want to be that guy who just goes around, you're not going to use this. Just, just give that to me. Because, you know, it's just, it's, it's almost like, why would you not use something that's free? That, you know, all you have to do is just go out and uh, use the gift card. But I was challenged to, um, to relate this thing over to the spirit and see how Christ died so that we can have so many gifts and graces 
And so many things are ours in Christ, but a lot of times we just don't use it. We uh, we just let it, you know, go to waste. Or, you know, we serve a God that's given us power, but all the time we don't find ourselves using that power. And uh, there are nine qualities that begin to shape a person's life after they receive Christ. Nine qualities or fruit. And uh, I got eight of them up here for you without leaving the one out that we're going to use this morning. Uh, but the, these eight are love, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And when we receive Christ, we have all these abilities in us. God, God has gifted us to be able to walk in love and peace and patience and kindness and goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And the one we're going to focus on this morning is joy. And God has given us the ability to walk in his joy. Joy is a fruit of of the spirit and what i mean by joy is the fruit of the spirit is joy is something that we can walk out when we begin to let the holy spirit control our lives and we begin to let him have free course in our lives we begin to live out this joy and when we interact with people they begin to see this joy in us and it's available to us it's ours in christ and uh it's different from happiness um i want you to know that uh Happiness and joy are two different things. Happiness has to do with things happening. In order for me to be happy, I have to have something good happening. I got to have get some new socks and some new underwear. I got to get a new car, a new house, a new job. Uh, you know, I got to uh, get a PS4, a PS4 game, a PS3, a Xbox 360. Something has to happen good in order for me to be happy. But happiness is not all that we want because what happens when I get my new dog and then somebody runs over my dog? If all I have is happiness, if you're going to be sad, your happiness is going to be gone. So God is challenging us this morning. He wants us to have joy because joy is going to last for us. Joy is going to be there whether times are good or the times are bad. So God wants us to have this joy. And before I go any further, further, what I want you to know is that joy um, comes from God. If you want to know joy, you got to know God. I'd be, I'd be, um, I'd be telling you a, a story if I told you that you could walk in this joy without Christ. Joy is something that we get from Christ. It's uh, there's nothing in the world that can help us have this joy. There's no amount of money that we can attain, or not this big position that we can get, and then I'll finally have this joy. Joy only comes through knowing God. Joy only comes. Uh, through Christ. And the world has happiness for us, right? Right, absolutely. There's things that happen for us in this life that make us happy. You know, if we get a promotion or we get we start making more money a year, or we, you know, something just good happens for us, we can be happy in it. We can be happy. And in that moment, that happiness is real. But it doesn't last. And so God God is offering us this joy through his son. His son is the gift. The gift we've been talking about um, all this month, over the course of this month, has been Jesus. When Suzanne, when Pastor Suzanne talks about when uh, God sent his son, he unwrapped love for us. He did. He unwrapped love. He unwrapped Jesus for us. And Jesus is to focus on joy and that's what God has given us freely through his son and uh, in Matthew 2 verses 1 through 12 we have the story of the wise men and in this story of the wise men the the wise men were the first religious figures uh, to worship Jesus the Bible says that they came from the east to worship the newborn king of the Jews. So these um, these wise men came to worship the newborn king of the Jews. Uh, when the star stopped, it stopped right over the place where Jesus was. 
And so the Bible says that when they saw the star, they were filled with joy. When they, when they had, who they had traveled miles and miles to see, the man they had traveled afar to see, they came to see Jesus. And when that star stopped over the place where Jesus was, the Bible says that they were filled with joy. And it, isn't it great just to see what, they, what filled them with joy, just to see where Jesus was, just to meet up with Jesus, just to finally make it to the Savior, to the king they had came to worship. That filled their hearts with joy. And so God is, God is telling us, you know, this morning that if we, if we could just remain there in a state of knowing because we've come in contact with the king, because we have a relationship with him, no matter what circumstance comes our way, no matter what happens in our life, we can still operate in this joy and in this love of Christ. No matter what's going on in our life, no matter what, you know, there's things that just happen in our lives. But if we can just think about Christ and get excited about Jesus, just like these men did. They, they had traveled miles, and, I, and I'm sure they had gotten discouraged because they couldn't, you know, get to him. But finally, when they got to Jesus, when that star stopped, and let them know that they had made it, that they had got to the king, that they had got to the Savior who they were looking for. Their hearts were just filled with so much joy. And God's going to do that for us. As we uh, maybe go through tough times, as tough situations, things happen in our lives, if we just can get excited all over again about a Savior who died on the cross for our sins, a Savior who's there for us, God's going to keep us in this joy. And it's, it's an awesome thing. And, uh, you know, I've heard it before that uh, really Christmas is every day because Emmanuel is real. And Emmanuel means that God is with us. And, and every day, the Savior that we believe in, the Savior that we, that we've received, Jesus Christ, he's with us every day. So every day is really Christmas. Every day you can wake up and say, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, because the sun is here. And one day he's coming back. And we just want to. More than anything, you know, this delivery may be botched up, but one thing I want us to see this morning is that the joy of God is real and that it, co it comes through the Son. All we have to do is receive the Son, and Jesus is our joy. He's that joy that remains through every circumstance, everything that goes on our li in our lives. He's what lasts. He's our joy. And uh, I wanted to say as well that... Uh, you know, different problems arise uh, and, and, you know, sadness and different emotions will come. Even though we know Christ, I'm not saying that because we know Christ, we'll just always be these giddy people and people who just never get sad again. No, uh, uh, feelings of sadness and discouragement and frustration and confusion and doubt will still come up. But ultimately, joy, the joy will be found in this world and in Christ. And if it's not, all we got to do is just trust him. You know, sometimes some situations may arise in our life and, you know, we just feel so down. But all we got to do is say, God, you know what they said about me. You heard them, and I'm mad, so it hurts. Or you know my financial situation, God. You know that I don't really have the money that I would like to have. And you know, you know that I don't really feel good about this. God, just help me to have some joy. Help me to retain my joy. Help me to get past this. Help me to do it. And God will do that for us. All we have to do is just ask him. And uh, it's so funny because you would think that the, that the Lord inspired our pastor just to, you know, to select two leaders out of the congregation uh, to talk about this joy because God wants us to be happy. And God wants us not to be a sad people. And he wants us to just be glad all the time. But really this joy thing, it's not only for us. It's for others. It's about us affecting a hurting world out there because there are a lot of people going through a lot of things and they're trying to cope with their problems and depression and different things with things that can never satisfy. And God's going to need us to be joyful. God's going to need us to be glad. He's going to need us to have this spirit of joy and serve him with gladness because that's what's going to attract people to, a lo to the loving Savior that we serve. Because we're, because we're joyous, because there's nothing more, more unattractive than a person who's just always just down and down, 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 you know, it's, it's hard, you know, to, uh, 
it's hard for people to be attracted to a Christ that's not helping you to be good. So it's, we just thank God that he's, going, that he's given us this door, that we're going to be able to touch this hurting world with the gospel, and we're going to be able to serve him with gladness because the world doesn't know this door. The people in the world, they're out there, and they're trying to, you know, get more money or, you know, they're, you know, just bragging about how much they got and different things, and they don't have this door. So when things go wrong, they have no hope. They have no help. But we have the Savior, and we're able to look to him, and we're able to uh, share him with them, and we're able to do it for them. And uh, every day we need the Lord, even after we receive him. We still need him every day. Uh, every hour, it's like the song says, we need the Lord all the time. It doesn't mean that we uh, have arrived when we, when we receive Christ or that we won't have to uh, do anything else, but it means that we do have a loving Savior in our life, and he's helping us uh, to do what he is called us to do, and he's going to help us to walk in his mind care, and the focus is his care, and God's going to use us to help others there's so much uh, negativity in the world and so many people trying to cope with their problems with things that that just aren't just are never going to work if we will give them the true joy that they need God's going to use us to operate in this door and we're going to be able to to win some people are going to be attracted to it and they're going to they're going to ask us, you know, what, what, what is different about this person? Their light shines, and they are, you know, just so joyous all the time. What is making them this way? And they're going to be able to, you're going to be able to say that it's, it's Jesus. He's the one. He's the reason why. Because you never know, that, that smile or that handshake or that compliment can be what somebody will really just need. You never know how this door is going to affect the people that you come in contact with. Because of that smile and that good attitude that you have, they'll, they'll just, uh, it'll just brighten their day. And they may, may end up meeting the God that they need, that you need, the God that you need. And uh, I like to say that in my life, you know, I've had many ups and downs. And uh, the times in my life when I've been down, and, and one of them in particular, I can remember uh, about a month ago, right before Christmas, uh, the morning or the night before I woke up and saw my check engine light was on, I had, uh, I was washing my clothes, you know, I put the detergent in there, you know, went through the cycle, did what you're supposed to do, got the clothes out, dumped them off in the dryer, let them dry a while, I was just wet. I woke up, they were still wet. So now I got a dryer out, I got a check engine light on that I woke up to. And then uh, it's around Christmas, and there's some Christmas presents that I like to buy for people. But it, it's looking like, you know, my money's going to look funny, and my change is going to look strange. You know, because I, you know, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, you know, I'm going to have to do some, some stuff because I'm having some problems. And I was just down, and uh, I was just like, man, you know, what's going on, God? I, I really need you. And I was just so down about that, and I was about to lose my joy. And I talked to a couple of people, and they were like, you know, they give you the generic, Mike, it's going to be okay. I'm like, <coughs> dude, you know, <laughs> or whatever. But, um, yeah, and I was just really going through. And what I did, I, I told them, well, since you say it's going to be okay, let's pray for them. And uh, I'm sure they did or if they didn't, but I asked them to. And what I did was, just telling you what I did, I went to the Word, and I went to the Scripture in Philippians 4.19 where God, where God said that he would supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. And what I did there, I just read, I read that scripture back to God and said, God, you said this really loud so we could hear it. God, you said that you would supply all my needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And uh, eventually, not saying it happened right then, but eventually I got my joy back. Eventually I was able to hold my head back up again and, and continue to wear that smile, and I was okay. And I'm here to tell you that out of that, all my check engine light was was my gas cap. Mike, just tighten your cap up, son. And uh, my dryer situation, my dad was able to help me uh, fix my dryer. And uh, I learned a lot. I got to give that credit to dad. And I was still, because it wasn't much money paid out, I was still able 
um, to buy those Christmas gifts for the people that I wanted to do and also keep a little change in the bank. So I was just thankful to God for that. That um, And that, that's, just a, that's just a testimony just to say that God's there is real and to say that God, God will work things out for us because it wouldn't have did me any good to just worry and, and stay all, you know, bogged down and everything because he worked everything out. And then I had to go back and be shamed and be like, God, well, you worked everything out. So, sorry, I was so mad. But he helped me. He helped me to retain that joy. And, um, yeah, it's just, it's just a wonderful thing to know from God. It's a wonderful thing to know the gift that God's got for you. So, And uh, at the end of the day, if you've heard nothing else, that, that's, that's all that matters. But Jesus is the most precious gift. He was the most precious gift uh, over 2,000 years ago, and he's still there today. And he's still affecting lives. He's still, uh, he's still changing people's lives. He's still coming in and, and saving people from their sins, what his name means. And he said, you should call his name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. And one of my um, favorite verses is from Paul. Now, Paul wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. If you break the Bible up, you've got from Genesis to Malachi. That's your Old Testament. And then from Matthew to Revelation is your New Testament. And uh, two-thirds of that New Testament, Paul wrote. And one of my favorite verses is this. Thank God for his son, a gift too wonderful for words. And that's my take on Jesus. He's really just too wonderful for words. When I come up with something real good, and I'm like, he's, he's amazing, he's awesome. Really, I got to say at the end of the day, he's really got to be my God. No matter what I go through, no matter what I face, he's a gift too wonderful for words. And I'm, I'm thankful that he's a part of my life. Are you thankful that Jesus is a part of your life? And, th- and this joy, guys, it, it's, it's so awesome because it's going gonna, it's gonna to give us what we need to be able to shout Jesus' name in joy, to be able to walk in Publix and you know, just have that smile. You ain't even got to say nothing about Jesus per se, but they'll see that on you. They'll see him on you. They'll see the joy of the Lord on you, and they'll want to know who it is. Who, what is it about you? As long as we shine for Jesus, he's going to do the work, just like how I'm botching up this delivery this morning. <laughs> and I know it, but it's cool because God is still good. He, he's going to do the work. The Holy Spirit is going to do the work. We never, no matter how good we think we did or how good, you know, whatever, God is still God, and he has to do the work. He's just going to use us as his instruments to get his points across. So I thank you guys uh, for listening this morning. Let's just, let's just walk in this joy. Let's just make up our mind. We're just going to walk in this love. We're going to walk in this joy. We're going to not just let it be for us and our benefit so we don't have to be sad. We're going to say, even though I'm not sad and I'm walking in this joy, I'm going to share this love. I'm going to share this joy with others because they need it. This world needs it. And uh, God bless you guys.